to discuss about input output organization uh, as you know that in computer system as per the von neumann concept it must consist of memory input output devices and cpu so the general construction is like this let's say this is our memory cpu io devices so this is the bus this bus connect all these basic devices basic and the non von neumann concept it consists of memory cpu access this memory by addressing so this is the cpu bus now cpu address this memory through this bus memory again receive the data from the io devices by using this bus so th this is the io devices this io devices cannot be directly connect connected with the cpu this cpu speed as you know is quite higher as compared to the io devices again cpu speed is quite higher as compared to the memory so they cannot be directly connected so it require one bus through which they are connected this bus is a common bus that consist of data bus address bus and control bus so the three buses are the minimum requirement to address from some of the devices to take the data by the cpu this data bus is required to take the data this control bus is required to send the control signal by the cpu to the any of the devices to receive the data so in this input output organization so these are the devices where the input output devices are connected these input output devices as i told you this cannot be directly connected with the cpu because of the cpu is made up of electronic devices this made up of some electromagnetic device or electromechanical devices again basing on the speed its speed is quite slow or as compared to the cpu so your cpu cannot wait till the data is received from any of the io devices or from the memory because cpu speed is quite higher and many of the instructions are to be executed by the cpu so if cpu wait for any of the devices then it slow your your system so cpu is working independently by taking the data from some of the units and it also accessing the data from some of the units also so in this io organization we have to discuss about the types of io devices how these io devices are interconnected and how these io devices are connected through the ports so that it receive the data by the cpu for execution so we have to discuss about the peripherals so these are the peripheral devices these peripheral devices are basically divided into two parts one is the input output devices and another is the storage devices the input output devices like mouse keyboard mouse keyboard digital display unit like that all the io devices these io devices are generally made up of electromechanical devices and storage devices like hard disk drive they are bright so these devices are generally electro magnetic devices so io devices are of electromagnetic device it may be electromechanical devices and next is the interface as i told you that io devices cannot be directly connected by the cpu to receive the information or to exchange the information so this is why that your type of data transfer that cpu process the data in form of byte let's say let's say you know oh, think that you have one 32 bit cpu that it process the data in form of 32 bit but when we 
connect one IO device, that IO device may not transmit the data in form of 32 bits. And again the speed, the speed of the IO device is quite slower as compared to the CPU. So, that in data transfer, it takes the rate of data transfer. The rate of data transfer, the rate at which the data is transmitted from the IO device to the CPU. This is quite slower. And next is the type of construction. How these devices are constructed. As I told that IO devices are electromechanical or this may be electromagnetic. But the CPU is the electronic device. So, basing on the constructions also, the IO devices are constructed differently as compared to CPU. So, the IO devices cannot be directly interfaced or connected to that CPU. And next is through which that is connected the port. That all the IO devices require different types of port to connect so that they can transmit the data to the CPU. So, that way we have to think about the organization, we have to think about which type of peripheral are there, those have to be connected to the CPU and how to connect these IO devices to, to that system and next to the port, through which port that is to be connected. So now you know about the IO devices that these IO devices are of this type. Now think in general you have some IO devices. You have some IO devices. Those IO devices are to be connected to the CPU. So to connect, as I told you, it requires one bus. That bus consists of address bus, data bus and control bus. So let's say these are three buses. One is of data bus. Let's say this bus is data bus. Let's say this is data bus. One is the address bus. Let's say this bus is the address bus. Let's say this is the address bus. And next bus is the control bus. Let's say this one is control bus. Let's say this is the control bus. Now these bus, these buses are connected to the I/O devices. Let's say this one is memory. And this one is CPU. Now this CPU access this IO devices to receive the data or to transmit the data. So how it access? Now this CPU address this IO device. Let's say there is one printer here. Let's say this one is printer. Let's say this one is printer. This is one IO device. Printer is to be received, uh, some data is to be transmitted from the CPU to the printer. So, this CPU send one address to this printer to recognize it first. This address is already known by the CPU that this uh, printer address is this and this is con connected with this port. So, CPU now send one address signal to this IO device to make it active. Now that device get activated, address, after addressing, it say, that means CPU say one control signal to write the data into the printer. So that from this control bus, now one control signal is transmitted to this IO device. Now control signal is received by the printer circuit. Now it know that some data to be printed. Now once you know that, now CPU sent the data through this data bus. So this is the data bus. From this data bus, the data is to be transmitted to that printer. If you are connected one keyboard, let's say this is one keyboard. So the CPU receives the data from the keyboard. So when the, you, are, you click some data, you click on some switch, then the information is transmitted through this CPU. Now CPU immediately get addressed. So it know that some information are transmitted from 
this keyboard so that keyboard immediately address that device that is the keyboard now once it address the control signal from this device is transmitted to the cpu through this line so this one is the line so now control signal is transmitted to the cpu so once you find out the control signal now immediately the data from this keyboard is transmitted through this data line to the cpu so now data is transmitted to the cpu <coughs> so cpu now receive the data from the input so when any of the data are to be exchanged by this io devices then this io device is addressed by the cpu by using the address bus this one now cpu send the control signal to this io devices io devices can also send the control signal to the cpu so by exchanging the control signal the data from this io devices are to be transmitted to the cpu or cpu transmit the data to the output device so these are three buses so now when the three buses are connected to the memory same thing the cpu address the memory through this address bus now once it get address now cpu send the control signal to this memory to read or write operation again basing on the control signal the data from the memory is transmitted to the cpu or cpu transmit the data to the memory so if you think about this three bus now this control bus is by directional because io device can send the control signal to the cpu cpu also can send the control signal to the io device again if cpu send the control signal to the memory memory can send the control signal to the cpu data again cpu output the data to the output device cpu receive the data from the input device but when you think about the address now cpu can address the io device cpu can address the memory but this memory and io devices cannot address the cpu so this bus is unidirectional but all these two buses are bidirectional so you know that the cpu receive or transmit the data to this io devices by using these three buses now <coughs> next is now how the data is transmitted from the cpu to the io devices or from io device to the cpu as cpu speed is quite higher as compared to io devices io devices are quite slower so as per the speed of the cpu if it transmit the data to the io devices then io device cannot process the data basing on that speed again when io device send the data to the cpu I would say speed is quite slow, so your CPU cannot wait till the data is to be transmitted from the I/O device to the CPU. So CPU is working on its way, I/O devices are working in, in in its way, but there is one variator. You know that that is the buffer. That buffer receives the data from the CPU till that is processed by the I/O devices. Again, I/O device transmit the data to the buffer, and after transmitting the data to the buffer, again from that buffer CPU. receive the data so it act as a mediator to exchange the data between the cpu and the io devices for that there is one io processor to do all these things this is also called as iop input output processor now this input output processor interact with the cpu let's say these are three buses 1 2 3 that buses are data bus address bus And control bus, as I told you. Now this is the CPU here. Now when CPU want to do some operation on any of these I/O devices, then this input-output processor contain three circuits. One circuit is called as addressing circuit. This circuit is called as addressing circuit. The function of this circuit is when This CPU send the address to this input output processor. Now it interpret that address and find out for that address which device is connected. So it find basing on this address, it it find out which device is connect connected and which device 
the CPU want to address. So the function of this circuit is to find out the exact device which is addressing by the CPU. Now next is data. Now this uh, function of this circuit is to receive the data from the CPU. He CPU want to transmit the data to the output device or function of the circuit is to transmit the data to the CPU when input device want to transmit the data to the CPU. So the function of the circuit is to receive the data from the CPU to transmit it to the output device or receive the data from the input device to transmit the data to the CPU. So function of the circuit is to access the data and next is the control. control circuit. So function of this control circuit is to exchange the control signal between the CPU and the output, input output device. When IO device send one control signal, then this circuit process that control signal and accordingly transmit it to the CPU. Again CPU send the control signal to this circuit basing on the functionality of the control circuit. So that these are three units, these three units are within this input output processor. So if any of the I.O. devices are connected here, then these I.O. devices, let's say I.O. device 1 to n number of I.O. devices are there. So these n number of I.O. devices operations are performed through this. If you want to address, then which device is address, like that. All the I.O. devices are operated. So, If this is the bus, let's say this is the bus, common bus, address bus, control bus and data bus, let's say address bus, data bus and control bus, and let's say this is the CPU side to access the information, let's say this is the I.O. device side. to access the data between I device and CPU. Then, this CPU contains one control circuit to transmit the control signal to the I devices. This CPU contains one address circuit to find out to which I.O. device is to be addressed. It contains one data circuit to exchange the data between the CPU and the I.O. device. So, let's say these are connected here. Now, many of the I.O. devices are now in this side. So, let's say uh, there are two posts. Let's say there is one port A, there is one port B. Let's say there are two ports. In these two ports, two devices are connected. Let's say one is printer, Let, one is output device. Let's say another is keyboard. This is the input device. Let's say two devices are there. These two devices are connected through port A and port B. Let printer is connected in port A and this keyboard is connected in port B. So, how to find out these two ports? Let's say this is one port, port A, this is one port, port B. Master. Port B and there is one control circuit. To control these two ports, so when this uh, CPU want to address one device, let's say port A. Now, through this port A, one output device is connected and that output device is printer. Now, CPU want to address this port, want to address the printer. So, this control circuit contains three informations. One is the chip select. Where this chip is selected, then this, two, this CPU can perform the operation on these two ports. 
many ports are there in that ports many devices are connected and i am taking the example of only two devices one device is connected in port a and another device is connected in port b and in port a one output device is connected and in port b one keyboard is connected now cpu want to access the data so when cpu want to access the data from these ports now cpu select that once it select now this output devices are selected now after that in which port it want to do the operation for that let's say there are two lines one is rs0 one is rs1 so in rs0 when it is activated let's say it activate port a when it activate it activate port b to do the operations no once it activated then which type of control signal are to be sent between this output device to the cpu or between the keyboard to the cpu now that informations are accessed by this control circuit now once the information is accessed by this control circuit now there is one data circuit function of that data circuit is to take the data so when cpu transmit the data from this line now data is transmitted through this so that this data is transmitted to the printer to print or data is to be received from the keyboard so that it is to be transmitted to the cpu so let's say this is the chip select and this is rs1 let's say rs0 the function which type of operation it has to perform if chip is selected then this is your so that it activate this organization now once it is activated now if it is 0 or 0 then it activate port a that means the cpu can output the data to the printer when the chip is select and this is your 0 or so now it activate port b so that it receive the data from the keyboard because keyboard is connected in port b now if it is 1 0 the control circuit get activated control circuit so this control circuit contains some resistor to receive the information from this cpu or to transmit the control signal to the cpu so it get activated so once one port is activated now the control if this information is transmitted from the CPU. Now CPU can transmit the control signal to this circuit to do the operation according to that control signal. If it is one one, then data. So there is data registers. Now from the CPU, the data is to be transmitted. If it is what A is activated, the data from this register is to be inputted from the keyboard. If this port is activated, like that, the devices are connected with different ports so for that port there is one chip select line so there is one control circuitry now this control circuitry send the control signal to those ports so that some of the ports get activated basing on the control signal that is generated once one port is activated then control signal is exchanged after exchanging the control signal the data are exchanged between the CPU and the IO devices like this in this IO organization the CPU cannot directly connected with the devices, so there are some mediator that is the I/O processor, input output processor. That processor do all this operation to smoothly exchange the information basic, uh, between the I/O devices and the CPU. So in the next class, we have to clearly check out how the data is actually transmitted from the CPU to the I/O devices and from the I/O device to the CPU because. The, because of the speed mismatch, one device cannot be directly transmitted, so it requires some mediator to how to transmit the data from one end to another. Thank you.